Welcome to our video series for the Lighting Application Suite and this time I will show you how to set up and how to configure the eNet network, the network that connects the server and the engines to create DMX output. Let's first begin with a little bit of theory. Our configuration, our network has a server and then two engines, one Butler XT2 and one Butler S2. And what you need in any case for the network is a so-called Ethernet switch. And this Ethernet switch is always necessary for the network. Do not use direct connections with cross cables. And in this configuration with these engines and the server you will need at least three standard Ethernet RG45 cables as they are used in any Ethernet network to connect the server, the switch and the engine. You will then configure the server network and this step has two parts. The first part is to configure the Windows systems and the LAN driver and the second step is to configure the programmer of the lighting application suite. Step number two is to connect the switch to the server. Then we will connect and configure the Butler XT2 and connect and configure the Butler S2. But do not connect all engines in one step and this is the reason why. In such a network you need a network address for every engine or for the server in the network and this is a so-called IP address because the whole network is a standard Ethernet network running TCP IP and these IP addresses have four bytes and these four bytes are the network address that is used in the network. The first three bytes are always constant and the same for all components in the network but the fourth byte is the one that has to be unique because it, it is used to address the single components in the network. Do not use the zero or the one for this fourth byte. The zero is somehow reserved in Ethernet networks and the one is the address that comes with the engines when they come out of the box right from the factory they will have a predefined address which is 192, 168, 123.1 and if you take the engines from the box they will all have the same IP address ending in a 1 so the network doesn't run properly because it is not clear how the server can address the different engines. And you should not use enterprise networks or streaming networks with video or audio to use for the network because such enterprise or streaming networks have a high data traffic which will disturb the communication between the server and the engines. It is best to use a separated network segment so this is all isolated from all other networks around you. So when the setup is complete, every component in the network has a unique IP address. The first three bytes are always the same and the fourth byte is different and unique. If you then later want to add additional components, you can just connect it and then give them again a unique and clear IP address, for example here the 21 for this configuration. The first thing we have to do is to configure the Windows system, the local area network connections and for this open the start menu for Windows and select the control panel. And in the control panel you have the network and sharing center. And in this network and sharing center you see all network connections. The connection we use for our ENET network is the local area network connection and clicking the local area connection will open the configuration dialog for the local area network. And this local area connection status we have a button which is called properties and clicking properties will open the configuration dialog for this local area network. In the local area network connection 
select Internet Protocol version 4. This is the IP network that is used for the eNet. Again, select Properties. And now you can set the addressing scheme for the local area network connection. And because this is an isolated network, we do not use, as in many home networks, obtain an IP address automatically, but we use a fixed address. So we click use the following IP address. And now we can enter the IP address for the server. And this is in our case 192, 168, 123, and we want to use the address 200 for our server. You also have to define the subnet mask. If I click into the subnet mask field, Windows will provide this so-called subnet mask. And this is 255, 255, 255, zero. And leave this subnet mask as it is, because this is the so-called subnet mask that is used for ENET, which is an isolated single network with fixed IP addresses. You don't have to set anything else, so I close the dialog and that's all I have to do to configure the Windows Local Area Network. I already started the programmer from the Lighting Application Suite and if I go to the Network window in the program you can see this is not the network connection we want to have. We have to change this and we do this via the application options. Opening application options, we go to the advanced tab and here you have the network bindings for the ENET and this is set to auto. I want to select another adapter, I click into the field and here it's a local area network adapter I configured to the correct address. So I select this controller and this address, click OK and now we have the correct network adapter used and the correct address for our ENET network. So now the programmer is complete and ready configured and Windows is ready configured so it's time to plug in our first engine which will be the Butler XT2. As soon as the Butler XT2 is plugged in you can see in the network window that it gets displayed but it still has the factory default IP address. To change this IP address I click on this Butler XT2 in the network window and I get a device setup dialog and in this device setup dialog I can change the IP address and here I change it from zero, from 1 with an additional 0 to 10. And now I can assign this new IP address to the Butler XT2 clicking OK and the setup data is written to the Butler XT2 and now it has the address 10. So next I will plug in my Butler S2. So I plugged in the Butler S2 and it is shown in the network window in the programmer and again it has the default address 1. I click on the Butler S2 and change the last byte of the IP address to 20. Clicking OK gets data gets transferred to the Butler S2 and now my network is complete. I have the programmer with the address 200, the Butler XT2 and the Butler S2 all with unique IP addresses. Opening the device manager, starting a system scan, will discover the Butler XT2 and the Butler S2. Clicking OK, scans the system and integrates the two engines. And it also discovered an EBUS input module and a glass touch terminal on the Butler XT2. So here are all my devices complete and configured and online. So my network is complete. So the first step is to configure the Windows local area network connection, then to configure the programmer with the correct network connections with the application options, and then I can integrate with the device manager the engines and use them for DMX output 
or as terminals and input devices. So that's all for now. See you soon. Thank you.